This is part 40 of Bootstrap tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss the Bootstrap model plugin. Creating a model with Bootstrap is straightforward. Let's say how to create a model with a header, body and footer. So here is what we want to do. When we click this login button that is present on the right hand side of the page, we want to display this login form as a model. When we click this close button that is present within the footer of the model, we want this model to be dismissed. Along the same lines, when we click this little cross button which is present in the header of the model, we want this model to be dismissed. Let's see how to achieve this. Let's flip to Visual Studio. The first thing that we are going to do here to create a model is create a div element with class model. Let's also give this model an ID. Let's call it login model. And we want this model to be displayed only when users click the login button. We don't want users to be accidentally tabbing into the model. So to prevent that, we are going to set tab index to minus one. Inside this development, we are going to create another development with class model dialog. And inside this development, another development with class model content. And inside this div, we create our model header, body, and footer. To create the model header, we create a development with class model header. And within our model header, we want title as the, I mean login as the title. So to create the title, we are going to use an H4 element and set its class to model title. And the title is going to be login. Along with the title, we also want this little cross button, which is going to dismiss the model. To get that cross button, we are actually going to use the button element. And the class on this is going to be close. And we are also going to use data dismiss attribute. And we are going to set data dismiss attribute to model. So this attribute will actually make the model to be dismissed when we click this cross button. And to get this cross button, the content for the button is going to be ampersand times semicolon. And then the next thing that we want to do is create our model body, which is going to contain fields for the user to log in, username and password. We discussed forms in part 20 of this video series. So I'm actually going to paste some HTML within our model body. First, let's create model body. To create model body, all we do is create a div element with class model body. And inside this, we have a form. We discussed forms in part 20, so I'm not going to go over this HTML. Finally, what we want is a footer for our model. And to create a footer for the model, we're going to create a div element with class model footer. And within our footer, we want a button to be able to log in and a close button to dismiss the model. So let's create a button element here. And the class is going to btn. Let's also use btn primary contextual state class. And the text on this button is going to be login. And here we want the text on the button to be close. And for this model to be dismissed, we will use data dismiss attribute and we are going to set that to model. All right, so let's save our changes, reload our page. Now we can't say anything on the page. That's because this is a model and something should trigger this model. And to trigger this model, we need this login button. So just before the model, let's go ahead and create another button. And the class of this is going to be btn. Let's also use btn primary. And we want a small button. So I'm also going to use btn sm class. And the text on the button is going to be login. Now, I'm going to use uh, you know two data dash attributes here data dash target. So when we click this login button, which is the model that we want to show, this is the model which has got this ID login model. So we are going to use the jQuery ID selector and point to that login model. And we are also going to use another data dash attribute and that is data dash toggle. 
and we're going to set that value to model. Let's save our changes, reload our page. Notice now we have the login button. We want this login button on the right hand side. So along with all these classes, I'm also going to use pull right, which is going to place it on the right hand side of the page. And now when we click this button, look at that. It shows up the login form with username and password fields. When we click this little cross, notice the form is dismissed. Similarly, when we click the close button, again, the form is dismissed. Now, let's look at a few classes and attributes that we can use to customize the behavior of the model. At the moment, the model can also be closed by pressing the escape button. Look at that. When I press the escape button, the model is closed. If you want to prevent the model from closing when users press escape button, then use data dash keyboard equals false. So on this model div, I'm going to use data dash keyboard equals false. Let's reload our page and look at this. Now when we press the escape button, the model is not dismissed. But if we click anywhere outside the model, notice the model is still dismissed. If you want to prevent that from happening, then use data dash backdrop equals static. So let's use that attribute, data dash backdrop equals static. Let's save our changes, reload the page, look at this. We have the model now, when I click anywhere, or when I press the escape button, the model is not dismissed. The only way to dismiss this model is either by clicking on this little cross button here or this close button. Now, at the moment, look at this. When I click this login button, the login model immediately appears. Instead, if you want to animate it, if you want this login model to slowly fade in and fade out, then use this fade class. So I'm going to use the fade class on this model div. Let's save our changes, reload our page. Now when I click this login button, the login form slowly fades in and when I click close, it slowly fades out. To create a small model, use model SM class. To create a large model, use model LG class. At the moment, what we are seeing here is the default model size. So if I want a small model, on this development that has got this model dialog class. Let's use model SM class. And when we reload the page and click this login button, now we have a small model. If you want a large model, instead of model SM class, use model LG class. Now we have got a large model. Thank you for listening and have a great day.